<laughs> so, he seems nice. Uh, he is. He's what, in his late 20s? Uh, I'm not sure. Nah, y'all wild for this. Isma is not like that, I swear. <laughs> Emperor's new groove is weirdly bad. And I kind of say this as a person who like loved it as a kid, but as an adult re-watching it, it's, it's not the greatest. This movie has a lot of flaws, which is, it's kind of fine for a comedy movie, but like the whole, the bigger picture just doesn't come together very well at all. The pacing of this movie is actually so atrocious. And like you can see with the transitions that go on, they do a lot of like fade to black transitions or just cut transitions. And like a lot of them don't make a lot of sense. The way this movie is cut is just, it, it feels so poor. It feels like it doesn't come together at all in a sense or make like any cohesion at times. Like a lot of the cuts in this movie just like feel very off or very like forced in there. Which leads me into the animation and I gotta say I'm not the biggest fan of this animation. The animation feels extremely cheaped out on and by that I mean like majority of the backgrounds are like gradients or they're just like uh blurred out gradients for the most part like these backgrounds are so uninteresting and it's for a majority of the movie there are a couple good frames of animation in this but overall it sort of follows that same formula of like this blurred out gradient background and then like the foreground characters just talking above that it's not good now going into the score the score is super irritating and just super annoying like when two to three characters are talking at a time like the main characters they're like together or and like anything like that like Holy lord, the score just becomes horrible, and throughout majority of the mu uh, the movie, it's just a horrible score. It sort of feels like old school cartoony in the sense that like, almost like there, there has to be a break with the instrumentation. Like they do like strings, and then they break it up with like, I don't know, like another set of instruments, and then like immediately like, it, it goes along with the characters, but it feels so wrong and jarring. I should have done away with Cusco myself when I had the chance. Oh, you really got to stop beating yourself up about that. Uh oh, I'll get you another one there, Isma. Yeah. Who uh, using that fork, pal? Hey, don't I know you? Oh, I don't think so. Wrestled you in high school. I don't remember that. No, no? metal shot. Ah, uh, no. Oh, I got it. Miss Narka's interpretive dance. Two semesters. I was usually in the back because of my weak ankles. Ooh. Come on, pal. You gotta help me out here. This happens throughout the movie to where the score gets very loud and boombastic and just obnoxious overall when characters aren't really doing anything crazy or they're just having like a normal conversation but there's like slightly something going on. It's very annoying. Not to say all of the score is bad. There is moments to where I actually enjoy the score and I think it's very pleasing to hear or it's like extremely well produced but like majority of the time I'm not digging it and it's just making the story just that much worse. Speaking on the story, this story is about an emperor named Cusco who basically gets everything he wants. And so he wants to build a sort of like summer pool on top of a village, which uh, our not, another main character, Poncha, doesn't want, obviously. So the whole movie becomes them trying to like, Poncha anyway, trying to talk down Cusco in order to like build it somewhere else. That sounds boring enough on its own, but there's actually a second plot. There's a B plot to where, um, Cusco fires Yzma, her second, his second in line or assistant or something like that, and uh, Yzma tries to get back at Cusco by uh, killing him, and they end up turning him into a llama, and they try to just take over the throne. Like, they try to hunt him down and kill him, actually, and take over the throne. I find the people out to be way more interesting and way more engaging because of the characters given, like... Kronk and uh, Yzma are just so, they just work so well together and they are so charming. Uh, where's the other guy? Yo! Oh, sorry, I'm late. Oh, what I miss? Well, Yzma just tossed me this knife and asked me to 
you know, take them out. And then this guy. Kronk and Yzma just have so much chemistry together, and they are just the best characters in this movie. They are carrying this movie so hard. Usually, I get upset at, like, comedians or just, like, I guess, normal celebrities kind of taking a voice acting because they never changed their voice or whatever like that. But, like, they added very good direction for a lot, a majority of these voices. Kronk is a voice we all know and love, and he just fits the character perfectly like that's very good voice direction right there and Isma, she just sounds like she's having an absolute blast with this like she is just like bringing so much of this character to life she is just having so much fun in that studio i love it pull the lever crunk Imagine being this iconic, like full on applause. Now, talking on a couple of the big issues I have with this movie, this movie, like, it does a fourth wall break. And I know I said I loved it in a Lion King one and a half, but like, this isn't Lion King one and a half. Cusco doesn't really have that much of an interesting story or like the charisma to pull off what Timon and Pumbaa did back in like 2004. I forgot what it, I forgot when it released. Uh, hi, excuse me. Two seconds here. Um, I'm the one in the car. Remember, this story's about me, not him. Okay, you got it. All right, we're gonna move ahead. Sorry to slow you down. <laughs> Cusco's four fall breaks and overall self narration just isn't very entertaining whatsoever. Like, you ain't Timon, you ain't Pumbaa. Like, some people got it or they don't Excuse got me. it, and you here. don't um, got I'm it. Majority of this movie is just him whining non stop throughout the whole movie, and we're supposed to feel sorry for him because he's rich. And it's weird because you're supposed to root for Poncha, the peasant, but Poncha is just so irritating too he's like he could easily easily just let Cusco die and the majority of this story's problems would be solved yes i know it's not in his morality he sees good in every single person even though he's been double crossed like how many times by Cusco? like this whole story is about trust issues and that like Pancha, Pancha and like uh, Cusco just don't trust each other and they end up not trusting each other having trust issue trust issues throughout the whole movie and it's so irritating because each and every time each and every time freaking Pancha just believes Cusco without like any merit any growth because the pacing is just ass they they basically spend majority of this movie trying to build up Cusco into being like a good character or a likable character and that's failed like because like they keep going through these same tropes of trust issues and like him not trusting Cusco or like him trusting Cusco and it not working out and not panning out Cusco Cusco yeah quick help me up no, I don't think I will. You're gonna leave me here? Well, I was gonna have you in prison for life, but I kind of like this better. I thought you were a changed man. Oh, come on. I had to say something to get you to take me back to this city. So all of it was a lie? Literally, this is so stupid because five minutes before this, there was almost nothing hinting or illustrating that Cusco was changed or changed in any sense. Pancha is stupid for this. And they just showcase how bad this movie is paced and just how bad this, the main story is in general. Like, at the very end, they do like two minutes of Cusco basically like being good like his whole viewpoint has changed for some reason and I say for some reason because they like the whole journey is like two days and majority of the time Cusco is just like not wanting to be around this peasant and he's still egotistical and selfish it's only towards it's only towards the end of the movie to where he gets saved by Pancha or while well, he saves Pancha actually to where he just changes as a person it does it doesn't make sense Cusco just switches up like that and i he just doesn't deserve it he doesn't deserve to be liked he's not liked <laughs> this movie gave me whiplash like re-watching it because i thought it was supposed to be good but i 
I guess it didn't hold up. Now to give us some praise, some of the comedy in the movie is actually still very funny to this day. It's mainly with Krunk and Yzma, like Cusco, there, there's not too many good jokes with Cusco. At home of the mug. <laughs> of meat, what'll it be? <clears throat> we'll have two specials, is that all right, dear? Oh, whatever you say, Pumpkin, you know what I like. <laughs> We're on our honeymoon. Bless you for coming out in public. <laughs> the implications are crazy. Yo, wild for this. But yeah, that's where majority of my compliments kind of end. I think this movie is a solid three. Can't really see myself coming back to this movie, but that's all I have to say. Anyway, how's it going, pups? It's a canine, and I'm 